Welcome to the Monday Monologue. And if you thought that I was going to be ranting about Bluetooth speakers, that's not the topic for today. But I am going to do a short little thing about our disposable economy and how things are made not to repair. And it's just frustrating to me. This little speaker could have just as easily had this bottom cover snap off and have like a lithium ion battery that you can unplug, plug a new one in, put the bottom cover back on it, and be back on the road. Same thing with these cell phones. They could have like an easily replaceable battery in it. And on one of my phones, it was actually a OG Pixel 1. The battery got tired in it and pried open the case to get inside to look at the battery and they put the battery like under two layers of electronics and then put some Mondo glue holding it in where it was almost impossible to get the battery out without cracking the screen. And I was able to do it, but it was a super pain and yeah, I got another couple of years of life out of my phone, which I'm sure that's what they don't want you to be doing. And this little Bluetooth speaker is the same way. I did a video the other day about how to go inside this thing and replace the battery, which is going to give it probably five or six more years of life instead of throwing it in the landfill. But instead, they make it where you have to pry this whole cover off, and then they put tamper-proof torque screws holding it together where I had to go buy a special driver to even get the screws out of it and then it's got a very common lithium battery in it and a little circuit board was able to like transfer the circuit board over to the new battery solder some wires to it and it works great again but they just as easily could have made a replaceable little battery module again the battery's right in the bottom and if they made it where you pop this bottom cover off and then there's the battery, you pull it out, got a little plug on it where you can unplug it, plug a new one in, then these things would be serviceable and you would actually get some extra life out of them when the battery goes bad. It's planned obsolescence. And they design these things to not be repairable and to be obsolete, especially with these phones, they upgrade the operating systems it seems like every time my phone starts getting four or five years old they have some you know mandatory security update and it updates your phone without even asking you and then after the update the battery won't stay charged and I swear I mean maybe this is a conspiracy theory I swear they upload a bomb to your phone that kills it so that it drains the battery, so you got to go buy a new phone. And I'm not the only one out there that thinks that they do this, that they intentionally sabotage your phone to make you go out and buy a new one. I've got some really nice phones that I've had over the year. I had a LG G2, I think it was. It had a great camera on it. I love the phone. And I'm not playing games and doing all this crazy stuff. I don't need the latest, greatest you know, super fast phone, but like I said, over time, they do something to the software that makes the phone battery die on its own, just sitting there not being used. So anyway, I guess I did do a rant about Bluetooth speakers. It's more about, you know, planned obsolescence of these things. And I think some of these speakers do have replaceable batteries. And so when you're shopping for devices like this, Make sure you buy things that have replaceable batteries and support companies that are allowing you to service their products because we know these lithium batteries have a limited lifespan and then you keep from having to throw things like this in the landfill. And for you DIY guys, stuff like this is repairable and they're kind of fun projects. If you do have friends or neighbors, stuff that have devices like this, go inside them and replace the batteries for them so they can keep using them and they don't end up just as scrap. So the other thing I want to discuss today is I'm seeing a proliferation of these super high power 
solid state amps. It doesn't matter whether it's a little $200, you know, Class D amp or whether it's the $2,000 Class D amp. They're all trying to sell us that we need 150 to 500 watts of power for our stereo and that's going to give you great sound. And I had a discussion with someone who manufactures these things and I couldn't get a good answer about why they're all so high power and what's the purpose of that when for most intimate listening three to five watts is probably all you need and you definitely never need more than about 30 watts in a home audio system and Unless you've got some crazy electrostatic magnapan type speakers that are huge current sucking things, I just don't see what we're trying to do with that. Because like Nelson Pass said, and I agree with him on this, the first watt's what matters. If Steve Deckard says the same thing, it's that first watt. And I've said this multiple times, and I'm going to say it again in this video. I think it's important that whatever amplifier you're using is sized to your use case. And if you've got some 100 dB plus horn type speakers or other super high efficiency, you know, whether it's open baffle or whatever, and you're only using one watt of power, you want an amp that maxes out at two or three watts at the most so that you're actually into the meat of the curve where the amp is actually producing some power and that your source going into it isn't going to be like microscopic that you're actually you know needing to have fairly strong source and a couple of reasons for that if you've got a 300 or 500 watt amp and you're only using three watts of it and it's a power amp especially it's got so much gain that you're putting such a tiny signal into this amp that it's highly likely that it's going to try to pick up noise from everywhere it can because the signal strength going into the amp is so weak. I would much rather be driving like a one to one and a half volt RMS signal into an amp to get where I want to be than be driving like a 0.1 volt peak to peak signal in to get the same sound pressure level in the room. And so let me know what you guys think about that. And I know these home theater guys love these multi-hundred watt amplifiers. And they, you know, have these eight channel amps that have 400 watts per channel. And, you know, maybe they're trying to get some dynamic sound or something. Or they're using super low efficiency subwoofers. And they've got multiple subwoofers they're trying to drive off the same channel. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe that's where it makes sense. But for two channel home audio... In any sort of intimate listening environment to me that just doesn't make sense and so again in the comments or if you want to send me an email and kind of explain to me what I'm missing here but I don't think I am and I know from my own experience listening to a 7 watt amp in my home stereo versus having a 40 watt push pull amp turned way down to get that same sound pressure level the little 7 watt amp sounds better the other thing i wanted to remind you about is we're going to be doing another preamp shootout and we've got a sparkos gemini more of a headphone amp we've got but it's also a preamp i think it's both and it's got some Tubes that we can swap into it, so we're going to be playing around with that. We've got an Aima that's a preamp, and they got another one that should be here tomorrow that has 
headphone capabilities and I think it's even got a DAC inside it. But the second one doesn't have a tone defeat switch. So I want to kind of compare those two to each other and see which one I think makes more sense and the use case for both of those. We're going to be comparing those to the color preamp that uses a 12AU7. I've also got a little OG FX Audio 01, which is kind of a cult following little preamp that we're going to be also listening to. And I may even pull one of my old projects that was a preamp that I built from a rant circuit I've got upstairs. I need to it's got kind of a little glitchy thing. I need to look at what's going on with it. I think it may have a voltage regulator on the heater that's not really doing what it's supposed to do. So I may dive into that and try to get that thing up and running to also kind of throw into this mix. But I know people are excited about preamps, and I think another preamp shootout will be something popular on the channel. So anyway, that's kind of it for this week's Monday Monologue. Don't have any new music to share with you, unfortunately. Probably could pull out some older stuff that I enjoy, but hey, we're going to skip the music selection this week. Hope you're enjoying my channel. If you are, please subscribe. Please like the video. Again, please comment below if you've got something to say about this whole super high power amplifier kind of thing that we've got going on in audio. And why, you know, if I'm wrong, put it down there too. I'm fine with hearing what you guys have to say. I'm still trying to learn stuff, and I hope you are too. And on that note, we will see you next week for the Monday Monologue.